you're in pain Soothing as a springtime rain To have a friend right in your corner Your heart will feel a little warmer Tender, loving Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Greenbrier Almond. Thank you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. Each week on Channel 3, we talk about an interface between Christianity and medicine. And I want to extend the medicine part by saying uh, that's wholeness, uh, uh, wholeness of the body, mind, and soul. And I have a, a very special guest, uh, Colin Rigger, on again from last week. and. Uh, Colin uh, is a pastor and teacher and uh, expository of the word, and uh, I think in the in the broadest sense of the word, is a soul doctor. So thank you <laughs> for coming on. Thanks for having me. Glad you know, uh, when we when we're sick, we need a doctor, and uh, when when we are going the wrong way, we need uh, a pastor to point the way. Yeah. Uh, people perish except for the. Preaching of the Word. Yeah. And you, it's a powerful, a powerful uh, medicine, isn't it? Very much so. Yeah. Jesus said he was the great physician and yeah. he, he came to heal the sick. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, John, uh, in one point, and we're going to talk about John the Baptist and, and, uh, and John, the, the Gospel of John, uh, here in a little bit, but, but uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's just, it gives me cold chills uh, when, I, when I think of this. Uh, John, the Baptist is in prison, and and his life is about to be taken from him. Uh, but he he um, sends a message through his his own disciples to Jesus, and uh, are you the one? Yeah. And and Jesus says, "Tell John, the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear." Uh, the, those in prison are visited, and I don't, you probably know the rest of it. But anyway, tell John. Yes. I am he, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Gospel of John. Yeah. Where you, where you extract that from. That's, we've been working through the Gospel of John at Grace Church. Um, and one of the primary characters, if you will, in the narrative of the Gospel of John mm -hmm. is John the Baptist. Uh, it was very important that... Uh, there be a witness to testify to who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. Isaiah said, uh, he prophesied John the Baptist coming. He said he was a voice in the wilderness crying, you know, make straight in the desert a highway for the Lord. Um, and that's exactly what John did with his life. Yeah. We had the privilege last Thanksgiving of going to the Holy Land. And, and uh, I would urge anyone uh, to go. Uh, we went with the Perry Stone Ministries uh, and uh, he was a good teacher some 28 times, I believe, he had been to the Holy Land himself. So uh, we, were, we were learning a lot about the geography and about, uh, you know, the characters of the Bible, of course, about Jesus. Uh, but when you, when you speak desert, it's desert. Uh, the, uh, I, we, went, we went over across the Jordan and we went into uh, Jordan, uh, and I guess it was, has been called Transjordan and has other names, uh, but they, they called it the, the, the Jordan River, they called it the Jordan Creek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not a river, it's not as big as the Buchanan River, right. uh, as far as the amount of water flow. Uh, and, and Jordan, the nation of Jordan now, is, is called the fourth most driest place on earth. Uh, so when you go into the wilderness and the desert, we're in the wilderness and the desert. <laughs> yeah, I don't think... I don't think it's any coincidence that God and His sovereignty selected that geographical mm. area uh, because it's, it's a metaphor in a sense that mm -hmm. Christ uh, is living water to all mm -hmm. who believe in Him. And Him making His incarnation mm -hmm. in a dry desert area 
uh, is a metaphor for the state of the spiritual condition of all human beings. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. We we are, uh, and we cannot live without water. Uh, we found out, and not to go off to to far away from ethics and so forth, but uh, there was a horrible case in Florida a couple years, a young lady who was deprived water, and she lived 14 days and died, and that's a probably as long as we could live without water. Uh, Shivo, I think was her name. Uh, but anyway, uh, we need water, don't we? But we also need, Jesus said, I am the living water. We need the living water to live too. Yeah, that's right. Um, and if we understand that life isn't only in the physical sense, uh, when Adam sinned in Genesis, he died spiritually. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jesus saying, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I am water. Uh, what he's saying is that I'm the only way that your spirit can come back to life. Mm -hmm. That part of you that can relate to God, worship God, honor God, live for God. Uh, he's the only medicine, if you will, that can revive mm -hmm. the dead the dead spirit. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have, uh, and there's different ways to do this. Uh, I mean, I'm going to suggest that uh, folks who don't have a church consider Grace uh, Church on the campus of West Virginia Westland College, Haima Auditorium, 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and, and there are other churches in our community, but, but we need to go and uh, taste, go and drink of that water uh, in order to, to be real, to survive. Uh, we're we're um, we're in trouble as a nation. I mean, a lot of trouble. Yeah, very, we're think, in trouble as a culture. As I a mean, culture, yes. In the 21st century, uh, the Bible says it's clear in latter times people will become lovers of themselves. Mm -hmm. Also says they'll surround themselves with people who will tell them what their itching ears want to hear mm -hmm. uh, instead of the truth, and the truth is what sets people free. Yeah. So at Grace Church Buckcannon, we prioritize the Bible, and. Uh, believe in feeding the sheep. Everyone uh, needs to know every word in this book uh, so they can live the life that God has for them mm -hmm. and so that they can uh, ultimately attain eternal life uh, through faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that was my experience. I wanted, anticipating this program, I wanted to go and hear what you had to say uh, because I thought if I'm to be a, a witness of my own, uh, then I better... Um, you know, be a valid witness and, and actually hear what you had to say. Uh, you know, one of the things you did say that that day uh, was about the light uh, and the darkness. Uh, we, we, Jesus was following, uh, or John, as he writes, was following the creation story, wasn't he? The he Genesis was. story. Right. And, then, and then applying it to Jesus' life. Right. Uh, and he's, he, like you said, he's the light. Uh, and, and that's, Darkness cannot put out the light. Yeah, the, uh, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. That's mm -hmm. what the Apostle John writes. Uh, yeah. The narrative that he follows at the beginning of the Gospel of John when he's writing, uh, if you trace the, the first, uh, I don't know, several verses of John against the narrative of Genesis, mm -hmm. you understand what John's talking about. And he's talking about the story of Genesis, but he's doing it in light of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So God has now revealed himself to the world he, in the man Jesus Christ, yeah. still God. Uh, so with that knowledge, what do we do with Genesis? We mm -hmm. know that all things were created through Jesus Christ. Right. Uh, and when man sinned, he extinguished his own light. He put mm -hmm. it out with mm -hmm. his sin. And yeah. all of us are born in that condition and darkness Mm -hmm. descended on the whole earth. The incarnation of Christ uh, when Jesus came to earth was the first moment in history since that time when a light began to shine again and He was the illumination mm -hmm. uh, for all people to be able to see God. Right. I believe you pointed out that there had been actually a four, a 400 years without any new revelation. That's right. I mean, a very dark time. Yes. Uh, we're, we're coming into a dark time. In, in our culture, uh, but 400 years, it it's, it's it's cannot be fathomed. I can't, I can't think about that. Uh, I haven't lived nearly that no, long. No, so. <laughs> no, 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 I don't want to. I, don't, I mean, uh, we, we have a finite time, uh, but, but I don't want it to get that dark. Yeah. It could. It could be that dark. 
Yeah. I, I was reading uh, today in my own meditation that uh, Paul in one of his churches was the church of Ephesus. And there, one third of the people of Ephesus were slaves. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's something we've abolished in America, but, but we're a slave to drugs. People are. We're a slave to debt. Mm -hmm. People are. We're a slave to, to many things uh, without even realizing it. Yeah, the Bible says that all you are a slave to whatever you subject yourself mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. uh, all human beings being born uh, with depravity, mm -hmm. being born in a sinful nature, uh, they are automatically slaves to sin, and that mm -hmm. will manifest itself in different yeah. ways. Some people will appear successful, but they're a slave to greed. Mm -hmm. Some people are a slave to drugs or alcohol, pornography very mm -hmm. prevalent. Um, and it will manifest itself in many different ways, but the disease is the same. Mm -hmm. You're a slave to sin. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ dies, resurrects to free us from sin so we can become a slave to righteousness. Mm -hmm. Right, and that would be the, the answer, that Jesus is the answer. You know, they used to carve this on the uh, side of the uh, rock. Uh, I remember driving down to Webster Springs or along the Elk River all the way to Charleston and, and uh, where there would be a big outcropping of rock, the old mountaineers would say, uh, you know, Jesus is, Christ is the answer, Jesus is the answer, prepare to meet thy Lord. and. You know, different sayings written right into the rock. Uh, people were alarmed, as they should have been, about a life without Christ. And we need to be alarmed about it today, don't we? Uh, we were created for intimate communion with God. That's why He made us. Uh, Adam was created to marvel at God, to be in awe of God. Mm. And then as he gazes upon God in amazement, he cultivates and builds the earth in the image of the Father. Mm -hmm. So he's like Father, like Son. He's going to create now. Yeah. And, and he's Everything designed... Everything that my Father has taught me, I'm teaching you. Right. Jesus said. Yeah. And, and Adam was created to worship God and to have communion with God. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus came so we could restore that relationship. Hmm. And, and uh, obviously, uh, you believe the church is the tool. I mean, right. You've started a church, uh, and I'm saying to folks, join a church, find a church, uh, be part of a church. Uh, yeah, we're in a we're in a day and age when people don't like to make commitments, mm -hmm. and they don't like to keep their commitments. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are against church membership, but. Mm -hmm. In the New Testament church, it was very clear. Uh, Paul would say, you know, cast out the evildoer from among you. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you know who's among you if no one's committed? Uh, right. So it's very important, that, myself included, everyone has to subject themselves to spiritual authority. Mm -hmm. It's better to lose an eye or a hand and enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. You know, you might have to swallow your pride. And mm -hmm. I have to do it all the time to, you know, to hear where I'm erring. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a very important practice. Right. Uh, you know, the, uh, I was reading a book, uh, Ravi Zacharias, uh, he's writing about the problem of pain. And, and, and as a doctor, I'm interested in pain. Uh, but uh, he, he rightfully says we need to have pain in our life in order to, to live. Because if, if we had leprosy, for example, without any touch or pain, we would be burning ourselves, burning our flesh. You know, the rats would eat off our fingers. All the bad things that happen in India where people don't experience pain, uh, but but as you said, people don't want to experience pain. They, they somehow think that to be pain-free would be to be perfect, uh, right. but it's not. It's 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 a it would be a miserable existence if we if we uh, if we don't not only experience pain but learn from that pain. Yeah. Uh, coaches will say no pain, no gain. Right. And when they're teaching their young. Uh, uh, women and men to play the sports. They, they know that it, it's, pain has a role. Yeah, and in the spiritual condition of man, uh, for a non-believer, the pain they experience is intended to push them to repentance mm -hmm. and faith in Christ for salvation. Uh, and then for the believer, the pain we experience is called discipline. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we're told by Scripture to endure discipline mm -hmm. and to be glad about it because we know that a father disciplines his child. Yeah. So it affirms our calling and election, so to speak, uh, when we experience discipline from mm -hmm. God that points us to repentance mm -hmm. and holiness. And, and uh, I think the same root, uh, the, the followers of Christ were called disciples of Christ. 
Right. They were disciplining themselves under Jesus as a teacher. Yeah. And, and more than that, they, they uh, you know, uh, uh, at one point, uh, G Jesus said, will you leave me and, and turn away? And, and he said, Peter said, where would I go? Uh, where would we go? Uh, you know, you are the Christ. And, and, the, and he, they, he knew, they knew they had to follow, put themselves under discipline. Yeah. Yeah. There's only, there's only one truth and God has created reality. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the only thing we can do is submit to him and humble ourselves. So yeah. <laughs> we have to deal with whatever comes our way right. accordingly. Yeah. What, um, in your own life, uh, you, you had that moment. I think you described it in a previous program that you were 19 years old. You decided, I have to follow the way. I have to follow Christ. Uh, uh, what changed in your life after that moment? Um, well, to really explain that, I have to explain the doctrine of regeneration. Okay, sure. and, I'll, and I'm Why glad not? to do that. Okay, um, yeah. As I because said, I think I think people will look at you and say, "Okay, here's a changed man. Right? How did it happen to him? Yeah. Maybe my way will be slightly different, but it will be along those lines." Right. Well, the same. I I kind of like to uh, compare it to a surgery. Okay. God through the prophets, explained that he would remove a heart of stone mm -hmm. and transplant it with okay. a heart of flesh. Okay. And, and essentially what happens is when Adam sinned, man, okay, I'll start, I'll start this way. Okay. Man has three parts. He's made in the image of God. He's got flesh, mm -hmm. made in the image of the Son. He's got spirit, pneuma, made in the image of the Spirit. And then he's got a heart, mind, emotion, mm -hmm. and it's called cardia. When Adam sinned, he died. His pneuma died. So, so he's firing on two out of three cylinders, mm -hmm. and we're all born that way. Uh, and the moment of salvation is when the Holy Spirit miraculously breathes life into your mm -hmm. spirit, bringing that third part of you back to life. Mm -hmm. So now you're able to behold God. You're able to be amazed by God. You're able to worship God. You're able to enjoy God. You're able to turn away from sin. People who haven't been regenerated don't have an ability to not sin. Mm -hmm. Just not there. Right. Uh, but at the moment of salvation, when you are regenerated, uh, you have a no button, so to speak, and you're able to choose holiness. Mm -hmm. You're able to choose godliness. Uh, before we're saved, even the good things we do are still tainted by the sinfulness of our flesh. So... Christ said, that, or God said it this way, it was still Christ, but he said, mm -hmm. uh, your acts of righteousness to me are filthy rags. Mm -hmm. So the good things that they did were still tainted with their sin. Mm -hmm. uh, but after we're saved, we're able to please God, we're able to honor God. And this is different than behavior modification in that it does not produce arrogance or self-righteousness. I can look at other people who are not Christians and I can say, Man, I, I would be worse than that right now. Yeah. And it's an it's a attitude of humility. Mm -hmm. if, it produ if your repentance and your holiness and what you believe to be your salvation produces arrogance, it's not true salvation. Mm -hmm. True salvation produces humility. Right. So what changed in me was a fundamental shift mm -hmm. in my understanding of reality in the right. first place. It's not just I'm here for this amount of time and I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, it. It became this is a narrative that's much larger than me. Uh, there's a God who's a mm -hmm. central, sovereign, supreme figure, mm -hmm. and as such, I, ho I owe Him my allegiance and my obedience. Uh, so it became submission to Him. Mm -hmm. uh, so through a process, and everyone who knows me knows it's been a process, yeah. and it still is. Uh, through a process, I battle my sin now. So. Okay. You know, uh, the, I remember a couple years ago there was a, a movement uh, with men, and uh, I think there was a coach in Colorado that was heading it up. I can't remember the the name of the movement, but anyway, it was uh, primarily to focus on men, and, and they would get together in stadiums. And I remember watching a program uh, where they were talking about the, this need for a savior, and and uh, so this man begins by saying, "We need to be honest with each other and honest with ourselves. All of us have done something we could be in prison for." <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just we didn't get caught maybe yeah. if we're not in prison. So, uh, but that, but we we need to know that we need to start being honest with ourselves. Absolutely. And and uh, and some people are afraid of that. They 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 run from that thought. Yeah. If you have if you have cancer, denying that it exists 
won't save no, you from it. No, it won't. Denial <laughs> is, is the worst uh, defense there is, isn't it? Yeah, it's, absolutely. You have to know it exists. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and that's why uh, in the Old Testament, God gave the people the law. Mm -hmm. Paul in the New Testament mm -hmm. unlocks the Old Testament. Yeah. And he says, the law was given so we could know we're sinners. Mm -hmm. Isn't it strange? And I, I almost see this on the news. And I don't even watch the news every week or every day for sure. But... Uh, the, the people will be t arguing about taking down the Ten Commandments, uh, you know, maybe in a courthouse someplace in Oklahoma last week or someplace. There'll be a movement to take down the Ten Commandments. Well, the Ten Commandments are there so that we can be guided, right? Uh, and and uh, uh, to to deny that there are commandments that are need to be followed, it's, it's just a trap, isn't it? Right. If, if you, here's the best way to think of the Ten Commandments, I believe. Mm -hmm. If you think of uh, bumper bowling, okay. if you're a bad bowler, they'll put these inflatable bumpers in the gutters. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we need to think of the commandments of God like those bumpers. They're mm -hmm. keeping us out of the gutter. God gave us those commandments not to be some, you know, big guy in the sky with a hammer to whack you when you right. mess up. He gave them to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. And when we obey His commandments, we have happiness, we have joy, we're standing on solid ground. Uh, there's not deceit in us. Yeah. Uh, so they're there for our benefit and, you know, not acknowledging them. Whether they're posted in a courthouse or not, whether you acknowledge them uh, or not is entirely up to you. Mm -hmm. But understanding that they're there for your protection helps you to understand uh, why it's there in the first place. God loves us. He wants to keep us safe. He wants us to mm -hmm. obey His commands. Yeah. I remember my mother, uh, and uh, each mother would probably teach their children the best she knows how, And but my mother would, would uh, say in different ways, I hate deceit, I hate lying. And, and so, so we, we knew Whatever, when mother, mother, mother asks us a direct question, we better answer it with the truth, mm -hmm. uh, because because we could we did want to break a mother's heart. Right. Uh, but uh, but she had um, uh, seen the profound damage t to lives, mm -hmm. and and uh, and it is confusing, isn't it, when someone that you trust um, lies to you? I mean, it, it is a it's it, it's. A, it bothers me a great deal, and I. One of the things I've learned as a psychiatrist, and people who've watched this program uh, for the for the last uh, 28 years, uh, 38 years, uh, they would say um, they would learn that I've said this many times. What do what do I offer to people when they come into a for a consultation? I offer them an opportunity to tell me the truth, and I'm going to give them an honest feedback. Mm -hmm. I mean that's that's what we're doing. It's 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 perhaps the most honest dialogue they can have, except of course with with God, right? And and that that's uh, infinitely he he sees everything even without us saying anything. Yeah, God's uh, that's a, another travesty of the 21st century church is the minimization of the bigness of God. Mm -hmm. uh, if you read the prophets you'll get a really good understanding mm -hmm. of how big God truly is. So if you think you've got a leg up on Him, or if you think that you're ahead, or if you think that He's somehow not sovereign, or all-powerful over everything, including you, then you're really mm -hmm. deceiving yourself, yeah. speaking of deceit. so Right, right. I, I, uh, my wife has, um, we've been married uh, now for 40 years, and so she's, she knows some things I say over and over again. And, and after I, I realize something's happening in someone's life, I... I I realize that they're they're deceiving themselves, and 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 then I and I quote Jeremiah: "The heart of man is deceitful who can know? above all things. Who can know him? Mm -hmm. Who can know it?" And uh, it, 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 that that is painful, isn't it? Uh, to live a deceit. Yeah. Oh, very very much so. And then acknowledging it is painful too. Painful, right? But after but, that pain, but it's, but it's cleaning out a wound. Right. After that, yeah. like childbirth. After yeah. that pain, you have. There's joy there because Absolutely. now you're transparent. Yeah, yeah, free so. at last. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, this has been a joy having you on, Colin. And I know that uh, folks are going to want to know more about your teaching. Uh, I wanted you to expound in this program, and you have. Uh, so, this is just a foretaste of what you can learn uh, by going to Grace Church. Uh, it's on the campus of West Virginia Westland in the Science Hall, uh, Haima Auditorium, 
uh, 10 o'clock Sunday morning. And uh, they can go to your webpage actually and get directions, can't they? Yeah, you can go to www.gracechurchwv.com or gracechurchbuckcannon.com. Either one will get you there. Uh, you can get directions on how to get to the auditorium that we're using. Also, you can hear all the past sermons. Uh, you can read blog posts. You can listen to the podcast, the audio version of the sermons as mm -hmm. well. So if you miss a Sunday or you just want to supplement your normal church uh, or your normal Sunday learning with yeah. that, then you're very welcome to do that. Right. And, if, and I would, this would just be a word of advice. Uh, you know, as a doctor or psychiatrist, I don't give advice, but I, I do now <laughs> as a TV personality. Uh, word of advice, uh, if you're going to open the Bible for the first time and you're going to start someplace, uh, start with the book of John, the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the, in the New Testament. And uh, actually, that's what you're studying right now. That's correct, yeah. And you'll be on it for a while. We'll be on it for a while. Okay, <laughs> hallelujah. Well, until the next time, then this is Dr. Greenbrier Allman thanking you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. Special thanks to Channel 3 for this opportunity to come your way each week. And Colin, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. And, and I should say, Colin will be hosting the program in December in the first two weeks of January as my wife and I go to the Philippines to celebrate with this young Bible students and uh, the uh, 35 years of uh, our support of a Bible school there on Her Island. We'll come back with stories about that too. So see you next week. Stories of a West Virginia Doctor, written by Dr. Harold D. Allman. A collection of 55 short stories about his experience as a small town doctor in central West Virginia. And tender loving care. Stories from a West Virginia Doctor, Volume 2, written by Dr. Greenbrier Allman. Using videotapes to write 70 additional stories of his father's very colorful life as a small town doctor. They can be found for purchase at Amazon.com and most local bookstores. Tune into Channel 3 Buckhannon for Tender Loving Care with Dr. Greenbrier Allman, where he talks about the connection between Christianity and medicine.